Hello everyone, welcome. Christ is in our midst. My name is Matthew Ortiz, and in this video, I'm going to be showing, explaining how to set up when, when the hierarch visits your parish. That includes everything from simple vespers to a full hierarchical divine liturgy. Stay tuned. When a hierarch is present for vespers and does not serve, you only need to place one orlid on the right side of the iconostas for the hierarch to stand on. Once you have finally unraveled the entire thing, you want to take the neck and you want to take the bottom with the initials, the initials of the hierarch. Put your hand in between each one and you want to go over the neck so that it's already flipped and you don't have to do it later. Okay? And then from there, you want to take the middle, take the middle of the tail. You know that this is the middle because it has the loop. And you want to lay the tail on the table. And about every foot and a half, you want to fold it over. Okay? Make sure it stays nice and even. And every foot, about every foot and a half, you want to fold it over. Okay? And you're going to lift, fold. Now, when you get to this point, you'll see that the letters are facing flat down. And that's how you want it to be. And you want to tuck it under, under. Make sure it's nice and nice and even, neat. And then you want to take the top, you want to take where the icons are, just open them up like that, take the entire thing, and lay it down. And then from there, you just want to make sure that the bottom looks nice and even, okay? And I like to fold it under from that point so it's not hanging off the table. And from there, you know, you can just so if you have, if you have a, if you're rushing, it's okay. But if, if not, if, you know, make sure it looks nice and even. I like to make sure it's, it's, not, it looks nice. And there you go. Because when you put it on the bishop, the bishop will kiss the icons, and then you'll grab the neck of it, and you'll put it behind him, and you'll button it in the front, and then you'll flip the back, the two letters that I showed you. You'll flip it over to the front of him so that. This is in front, and then going straight down at the bottom by his feet will be the initials. Now, in my opinion, this is the most practical, most functional way to set up the Montilla. It, it's practical, like I said, and it looks nice. When investing a hierarch, whether it is a simple liturgy or vespers, or hierarchical, no matter what service it is. The first thing that is laid out is the set with the cross and the panagia. No matter what service it is, these will always be put on last. So in order to make sure that everything is in order when investing the hierarch, you wanna make sure that everything is reversed on the table, whatever's first, Whatever goes on first should be on the top. Whatever goes on last should be on the bottom, just to make it simple, easy, and easy flowing. Now the next thing, if the hierarch is serving a simple liturgy or serving as a priest, you would set it up in such a way where the omophorian is a small omophorian. He would vest and a small omophorian. And now, for me personally, I find that this is the easiest way to fold the small omophorian. And I'm gonna show you here. So step one, you're gonna take it and you're gonna lay it down, the center cross in the middle, and you're gonna take each cross, fold it roughly to the middle, lay it over, okay, and then flip it back. And if there's a lot over here, you can kind of fold it under to tuck it in like that. And you do the same thing for each side. This way, it's practical, it's functional, and it looks nice. Because when you rest the hierarch, you will then lift it up, and the hierarch will kiss this cross, and then this cross, and then you put it on. That way it's much easier. If I had these crosses folded under, I'd have to flip it around when vesting the hierarch in order for him to kiss these two crosses. So I find that this way is the easiest, simplest, it looks nice, and it's the most practical.
Now if their hierarch is serving a full hierarchical liturgy or serving matins or anything that wears a great omophorian, this is how it's done. So first up, there's two sides. It's very long, it's very complicated to do, especially to learn how to do, but there's two sides. Okay, so you're gonna make sure that you fold it over. All right, start by doing that. And you wanna make sure the bottom side is the back. So this is the back. Okay, this right here is the back. You notice the back because this is where the center cross is. And we have the two buttons here that hook on to the back of the sacros. So that's how we know that's, that's good. Because if it was the other way and you see this on top, it's wrong. So you want to make sure this is on the bottom and the other side goes over. And you want to make sure that it's folded at the end. Nice and even, nice and flat. Okay. And you want to put the cross right in the middle, just like we did for the small frame. Okay. And now the first step is you want to find the cross on this side, just like the small frame, and fold it over, all the way over, so that this over here ends here, makes it nice and easy, and then flip it over, just like the small frame, and if there's extra, tuck it under. Same principle, but more complicated. A lot longer, a lot more material, but same principle. And this one, you can leave it. If sometimes, sometimes the uh, larger Mephorian is larger, and you have space to fold it over again and tuck under, like this one, sometimes it'll do that. And if it does that, you honestly can just slide it slightly over and just fold this side under and leave it like that. And that right there will be perfectly fine. Because you'd, you'd rather have it long and stretched out than you know, doing that, okay? So that's how you set up the large Amorphorian for services that require. Same principle as the small Amorphorian, and in this way I find it to be both practical and it looks fairly nice when you're setting it up in the middle of the church. Now the Sacos typically I find easiest to lay down Again, the cross here. And you're gonna take each sleeve, you're gonna fold it to the middle. Make sure it's nice and flat, even. Each side, and make sure they're nice and folded. So it looks nice, and it's practical. And then you're gonna pick the bottom, okay? You're gonna take the bottom, and you're going to hold it up. Usually, I hold it on by the butt banner at the bottom. And I just roll it over nice and flat, and then just fold it down to the edge of whatever table you're using. Make sure it's nice and even, and there we go. Practical, and looks nice. Now the next thing, is we use a shield. Now, if the hierarch is wearing a shield that goes over the shoulder, you make sure that you put it on on top of the sacos like this because it would be put on before the sacos. Now sometimes the hierarch will wear a shield that has a little a little string to about like maybe this length and then there's little buttonholes and sometimes it'll button to the sacos. In that case you'd put it on underneath the sacos to make it easier because it would go on after the sacos. But since this one is a shoulder you just, I just roll it under, fold it under, make sure it's not showing, nice and even. And then just lay it down on top, just like that, nice and even. Again, practical, looks nice. And after that, the next step is we have, we have the cuffs. Now, to make it easier during the service, you should, when vesting, you should probably take the cuffs and make sure that there's a good amount of, of room, I guess you could say, inside to easily slip on so that the hierarchy is not trying to do that when it's time to vest or you're not trying to do that and wasting time or making things awkward. It's easy to do that, especially when vesting in the middle of the church. Make sure it's nice and open for easily, for easily be able to put on. And then I usually just take take like four fingers or three fingers or whatever, and I wrap each string. 
and I just fold it inside. Lay it over, that way, again, practical and looks nice. Because when it's time to actually do the vesting, I just take it, I drop it, and there we go. I don't have to fuss with it, I don't have to worry about it, it's not tangled, none of that. So again, just wrap it around your fingers and tuck it in. And I do the same thing for the other side. Make sure it's nice and loose. Don't want to pull too hard. And then I just take a few fingers and I just wrap it. And I tuck it in. And just lay it there. Again, practical. Looks nice. Next we have the belt. I find it easiest, instead of laying it across like this, I find it easiest to just take the belt and you usually just, usually there's two creases and you just fold it under, nice and even, and I just take the ribbon, the, the tie, put it behind it, and I will just loop it up a couple times underneath here, just to make it simple, and then I just lay it down, nice and, nice and easy, again. Practical, looks nice. Next we have the stool. It's easiest to me to just lay the stool down first. You lay it all the way up to the beginning of the sacos. And then you just take each, each set of crosses and fold it over. One, two, and three, okay? Fold the neck out so it's not, it's not there's not any creases here. And then you see you have one, two, three, one, two, three. So six and seven. And there we go. Again, practical. Looks nice. Now the last thing is the Stakarian. Now the Stakarian should be put on just as the Sakos is put on, the same way. So I would just I lay it down to the beginning of the sacros, so it's covering it, okay? Take each sleeve, and I take the string, I tuck it under, and just fold it over like that, and do the same thing for this side, okay? Hold it under, and there you go. And then you take Take the bottom from where the, usually where the decoration is, and you lay it flat. You fold it over just like the sacos, and then you fold it back to the end of the table. Make sure it's nice and even, and there we go. So it'd be easy to pick up by picking up one side here, one vesting the bishop, and everything will fall down. You grab the shoulders, and there we go. So in my opinion, this here is the most practical way to set up the vestments for a hierarch. Um, it provides both functionality, it's very easy to do, very easy to remember, nothing is fumbled around with, and it looks very nice. If you had to set this up and leave it in the church, it looks nice, and it works. Setting up everything else is quite simple. First, you place an orlet at the bottom of the ombo, two at the top of the envo, one in front of the altar, and one at the high place. The mitre is placed on the right side of the altar table. Then you will lean the jesel against the icon of Christ on the iconostas, and if the hierarch uses the dekiri and trikiri, you will place the trikiri on the right side of the back of the altar and the dekiri on the back left side of the altar table. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video to be helpful and useful. Um, that could be possibly help you to be able to set up when the bishop comes to your parish if assistance or help is needed. Um, one day, hopefully, I will be able to make videos about the entire services to help guide people in understanding what to do and what needs to be done and how to serve in the full services. 
But for now, I hope that this helps with the setting up and making sure everything is ready. Um, and thank you so much. Uh, I hope you liked it. Please share it with people if you know anyone that could benefit from learning about how to set up when the bishop comes. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that want to know, that may not know, or some people, it could be useful to know. Um, and thank you so much for watching.